Hey everyone. In this video, um, we're going to model this Italian uh, mocha pot, coffee pot. Um, it, this might be a uh, three-part tutorial. In this one, we'll model the bottom section. Um, and then in the second one, we'll do this upper portion. Uh, and then the, uh, the handle and... Um, in these other uh, these other items in the third um, okay so for now we'll uh, concentrate just on this bottom section it won't be a difficult uh, shape to achieve by any means all right so um, we'll go ahead and uh, work on it right now uh, we'll start out this is a ten sided object um, there'll be there's ten sections here and as you can see, it, it goes into a nice smooth bevel up here. Okay, um, the sides are uh, are planar, so um, we'll have to keep that in mind. We'll bring up a cylinder into the scene. Uh, it'll be a ten-sided cylinder. Um, so there we are with our ten-sided cylinder. We'll convert that immediately to an editable poly. And we're not going to worry about scale here. This isn't going to be modeled to scale. Uh, we have a crappy uh, reference image, so we're just going to do this to achieve, you know, a nice shape, um, a nicely shaped object with uh, subdivisional modeling. And at the end, I'll uh, I'll release this uh, model for free for you to examine the topology uh, and everything. So I'll release it as an OBJ as well as a uh, 3ds max scene file so if you're not using 3ds max you'll still be able to um, open it and uh, look at the topology all right so here we have our our 10-sided cylinder um, we'll go ahead and uh, select this top face and we'll give it a little bit of a bevel okay that's probably good enough delete that face Okay, next step we'll uh, select an edge here and ring it and then loop it so that we have all the uh, all the uh, edge loops that we want selected. Uh, create a chamfer. Um, we'll create a chamfer with two. Actually, I hit three on accident. We want uh, two interior segments and we'll pinch them together. Uh, probably like that. Okay, and the purpose of this will be just to uh, have a nice um, a nice crease here for our subdivision. Okay. So, that's a that's a good start here. Um, next we'll select this an edge here and we'll go ahead and loop that and then apply another chamfer chamfer this time with uh, We'll just go with a one one segment uh, straight chamfer, okay, and uh, we'll make it relatively thin as well, okay. So now we have this. Um, next step, we want to, because what's going to happen here is once we subdivide, um, we're going to have nice creases on the sides, as you can see here in, in this uh, example of a real object. We'll, uh, we'll have nice creases on the sides from, uh, you know, from our, um, our edges being so close together in proximity to each other on the surface. But we don't want the crease to continue up into this beveled area because uh, that's not what's going on here. Once, uh, once these creases reach this, this area um, and then get beveled, it's, uh, there's a smooth transition here. Okay, so what we want to do to achieve that is to uh, spread out the edges here um, so that when it's subdivided, it's smooth up here but maintain, maintains creasing here. Okay, so we can do that pretty easily. Just select an, an edge here in the middle of uh, the three edges. 
and then um, select similar to do that all the way around the uh, the uh, face loop here okay and then we'll open our loop uh, loop tools make sure auto loop is not selected in this uh, particular case and uh, we'll use our pinch tool to just spread them apart a little bit here okay and uh, that's going to that's going to do a nice job here but we need a little bit more uh, we need these parted a little bit more from the center uh, edge so to do that we'll um, go to border mode select border um, and then just uh, tap on relax a few times and that as you can see that spreads them out very nicely up here okay okay so now that we have that um, what we want to do is uh, we're going to scale this border we're going to scale it right to about there and then we'll pull it down slightly to right about there and again we're just eyeballing all of this there's, there's no uh, you know this is just completely arbitrary but we're just trying to match visually what we have in our reference here okay so we'll pull it down and we'll create some smoothness in here um, by adding some edge loops and select an edge and go ahead and ring it and we'll, we'll connect I'd say probably two connection uh, edge loops and um, so now we have this and what we can do from here is go ahead and select the uh, select the first one and uh, loop it and then just bring it up a little bit and select the second one loop it and bring it up a little and until you have a nice rounded uh, lip there okay and you could this this could also be done with the set flow tool as you can see just sliding the set flow tool in the graphite ribbon does uh, essentially the same thing um, so sometimes uh, sometimes it's helpful to use the set flow in this case all right to create uh, the rounded topology that you'll need in that area and that looks pretty good right now okay in the next step we're going to select an, an edge uh, right in the, along these uh, planar faces here and uh, ring it all right and that rings it all the way down okay and uh, now if you were to uh, loop this in this particular case it, it uh, I don't don't even worry about the bottom parts um, all we're concerned about is uh, this area right here for now um, if you were to loop that as I just did what what happens is that you're also catching these edges that are that are in this area of the model and uh, we don't want that all we want to do here is uh, ring this central portion okay and not and we want to do that in every segment in every section um, so one way to do that easily is uh, to use the select similar okay so as you can see now all of these sections on the planar faces have been selected uh, but not the interior ones we didn't we don't want those selected okay and what we'll do is uh, make a connection just one connection one segment right in the middle okay so that's what we want there and uh, that, that looks pretty good all right so then what we'll do is uh, we'll grab these two vertices okay and uh, select similar to get them all the way around same selection and we'll just move them up slightly don't worry about the pinching that's occurring right now we're gonna fix that 
All right, and then grab all of these vertices. All right, six vertices here. And uh, again, select similar. So they're, they're captured all the way around. And we'll just move those down slightly. Okay. Now we'll, we'll fix this pinching right here. Uh, and that's easy to do. We'll just grab an edge and we'll turn auto loop on and select uh, the center option. Okay. And that puts it in the middle here. So the next thing we'll do is um, hit relax and then we'll move the set flow until it's rounded again. Just like that. Okay. All right, so now we're in good shape here. We got our shape back, and uh, this is what we want to see right now. Next step is going to be add symmetry because we want the bottom to look just like the top. Okay, so we're going to add symmetry right across the middle here. Um, but uh, first, we're going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the entire bottom half of this model. So select all those faces and just delete. Okay, and then uh, apply a symmetry modifier on the Z. In 3ds Max, the Z is up and down. Um, if you're following this from, uh, you know, to utilize in another application, then uh, it's probably the Y axis. Um, but in 3ds Max, it's the Z axis. All right, so. Grab the uh, mirror gizmo of your symmetry modifier and just pull it up until the uh, two halves meet and uh, you have a continuous model. Okay. Uh, at this point, we won't uh, require symmetry anymore for the modeling process, so we could uh, just collapse all. Okay. The next step will. Uh, We'll create a bottom here on the object. Um, very simple to do. Just grab the border of the uh, bottom opening and uh, we'll just pull out some new faces here. Okay, we'll create a ring of faces right about there and then create another ring immediately after that. Okay, and uh, at this point, we'll switch to edge mode, grab an edge, and then in your uh, graphite ribbon, make sure your dot gap is set to 1, and then just click dot ring, and that allows us to select every other edge along that, uh, that uh, edge ring. Okay, so that's every other edge, and from there we'll just remove those, and then select the... Uh, the border opening again and collapse and what we have here now is uh, all quads okay so um, now that we've done that uh, we could go ahead and add a turbo smooth just to see what we're, what we're looking like here okay not too bad um, let's go back down a level um, what I'm going to do here is probably just add a swift loop probably right here and perhaps even on the bottom uh, just for tightening that area up a little bit um, it, it may not even be necessary but uh, it looks like it, it, it probably is and what I did just here is uh, I straighten that loop just by scaling it on the Z. And that straightens it all the way around. Okay, and we can look and see what we have here. And I think that is a better result for the bottom. And uh, that gives it a nice, clean, crisp edge right here at the top as well. And uh, we're, this is only at one iteration of, of uh, subdivision so that's not too bad okay I mean if we went to uh, two iterations that's even that's even better so all right we're looking pretty good here um, almost done the next step is uh, 
we'll just uh, create our uh, finishing portion on the top here. This there's a uh, there's an extrusion up here that will follow through to the uh, second part of the model. So we'll create that uh, next, and I think we'll just scale some new faces, pull them up, and uh, that looks about right. Okay, let's back up and see, right? Um, if you notice, uh, what we have here now is that uh, this is slanted. It's, uh, it's tapered uh, towards the top. So we're going to accomplish that after the fact in our case. I mean, we could have done it earlier by uh, scaling the end gone, but... Uh, you know the way we went about modeling this it could have been problematic and it, you know I I like to uh, I like to use modifiers to create overall uh, changes in that of that nature so um, in 3ds max anyway so I'm going to do it this way with a taper modifier and just uh, taper it down a little bit until it looks about right all right so that uh, that looks like the model to me and we'll just collapse two which maintains our uh, turbo smooth in the stack and we have um, we have our bottom piece now for this model okay um, in the next tutorial we'll work on this uh, this other section right here with the lip um, the pouring spout and uh, we might even create the handle or the uh, lid in this uh, next one. So, and then we might do a third one for the uh, the knobs and uh, the little gizmos, and perhaps even some of the inside. So, for now, though, um, I hope this was uh, helpful in some way, and um, you know, I hope you uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, find these uh, videos useful. Um, I, I thank you for watching and I look forward to uh, completing this model. Okay, 